Good morning, everyone. Uh, well, I um, have something I gotta gotta say to my mate, and um, I actually uh, I can't like go any further without expressing myself because it just presses on me um, that I need to maybe explain myself better. I mean, it, it's not ideal, it's not in person, but um, it's as close as I can get apparently. And um, and I have some explaining to do, um, even though I've been explaining myself for the last four years since I met her and realized who she was. Um, still, it things just... Uh, Somehow, it hasn't gotten through to her. And uh, even though I say all kinds of things, I write all kinds of things for you know four years. And uh, I've been true to her for nearly four years now. Um, but still, we haven't we haven't even been on a date together. So, um, you know. How do you come to the conclusion that somebody's your soulmate, and yet you haven't really had any intimate contact with them? Um, and that, well, it's hard for anyone to accept. And who can, who can really blame her um, for being skeptical? I mean, for me, um, you know, my whole the whole deal with um, religion and spirituality and um, what I would like to see people um, doing is not believing. So how can I ask her to even believe um, that, even though it's so, you know, vital to me? Um how can I ask her to believe when I'm asking everyone else to not believe in things just because you're told them? Uh, just because I tell her that we're soulmates, you know, how can I say, how can I condemn her or, you know, talk bad about her or whatever? May, you know, why don't you believe me? Why, not, why haven't you recognized uh, me as your soulmate when I recognize you as my soulmate um, well how how can I uh, how can I ask her to just believe somehow she has to come to the conclusion and know herself um, and if there's anything I can do to bring her to that conclusion to help her um, realize that then I will do it. And, uh, but the thing is, I, I, I don't want anyone to believe just because they're told. And I'm telling her that we're soulmates. But how in the world is she supposed to know that? Um, so it, it's a really difficult situation because we've never been on a date and never had intimate contact. And uh, so it's it's hard for me to explain myself um, while she's rejecting me and saying, well, that's not, that's not real. That's, I mean, how can you? How can you believe all that and uh, come to that conclusion? And, um, you know, and how does a person become so optimistic to even think that that's a possibility for there to be a soulmate? Um, you know, it takes a bit of optimism to think like that. Um, that there's someone alchemically perfect to you that doesn't mean they're a perfect you know physical body or they're uh, you know 
there aren't complications somehow you know nothing's no one's perfect in every aspect it's just that they can be perfect for you um, it doesn't mean that they're physically mentally emotionally um, spiritually just perfect right now it's an ongoing evolutionary process and the idea is that we complement each other to the point that we drive each, each other's evolution our chemistry is such that uh, that we complement each other in such a way we we um, we drive each other to be better and to learn more and to uh, experience life to the fullest um, and to um, drive the the creativity and introduce each other to our souls um, in a way that no other human being can. Uh, that's an idealism that you know doesn't it, it actually doesn't come from the Middle East uh, the the Middle Eastern idea well from historically from the very beginning uh, of the Bible you know it says uh, well an apocryphal story which means a story that wasn't canonized by the the Catholic the Roman Catholic Church when the Bible was canonized and made what it is today um, the story was rejected that um, of Lilith which Lila means night in Hebrew and Lilith the, the T on the end or the Tav is uh, the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet and just means totality so complete night complete darkness in other words and um, so Delilah, well, Delilah means door to the night, and, and that was, you know, the the um, the Palestinian or uh, the uh, Canaanite woman that uh, was the temptress for Samson. Um, so, anyways, it's this is an ongoing story, but um, of course. But the thing is, uh, the, a theme that is within the Bible, uh, the woman is night and the man is the day. Um, so Adam was, uh, was the day and Lilith the night and Lilith would not be subservient to Adam and so she was kicked out of the Garden of Eden and uh, then Eve came along, um, you know, was was created after at the Lilith because she wouldn't be subservient well so the what I'm just getting to is that the status of women has never been good within the Middle East um, at least historically when there was a written account when there started to be of course civilization and you can attribute that to to civilization itself because as a certain geographical area um, reaches its peak sustainable population um, that is there's only so much fertility a, any any area can offer and when you reach a certain population density um, it's no longer uh, feasible to have more people and then women being the baby makers are uh, their status goes down, you know, because uh, they just reproduce and we don't need more people because more people are harder to sustain and and uh, and then of course you have wars because you have fights over resources and um, you know that you could say that that's just a, a natural progression of civilization and that uh, women are bound to be uh, relegated to a negative status as population grows as there's too many people and too many mouths to feed um, but nonetheless uh, when the when the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Empire came into the uh, European cultures 
they introduced this negative status of women and just now of course uh, that status within the United States has improved and, and all over the world it's starting to improve uh, through education and so forth but <clears throat> there has been a, a very long time where women's status is, is poor um, and but that that it, that was introduced by the Roman Catholic Church into Europe and um, and the Roman Empire and so that's not a, a European idea and the idea that we can have an equal uh, that a male and a female are equal and that um, that they are just opposite poles of one another day and night and meant to be joined together and uh, not have polygamous relationships um, well that was either a uh, prehistoric idea to the Bible or um, you know well that's historic that's true but uh, also it's an idealism that the European culture um, already had you know they had that you know one man one woman uh, idealism already within the European culture and and so we're just really reverting to a native or native idealism when we adapt that to Christianity and say that there should be one man and one woman um, but it's not a Christian idea, it's not a, a, a Jewish idea, and it's, it's certainly not a Muslim idea. It doesn't come from the Middle East. And um, even though the status of women was the highest uh, in Egypt of all the Middle Eastern peoples, uh, you know, they could own land and so forth. But, uh, you know, we're all natives of some culture, and all those cultures that that we've come into contact with the status of women has generally been higher than it is within the uh, Middle Eastern religions and uh, and so that idealism doesn't come from the Middle East um, but yet it's there that that soulmate idealism is there and uh, I think that it's probably uh, shared by many native cultures all over the world. Uh, like I say, we're all natives of some culture. And it's, a, uh, it's just a natural thing. And, uh, and it's... And really, rationally... How can I explain it? Um, how did I come to that conclusion that that my soulmate is who she is? How did I ever get there? Um, now I know I've been my optimism. I, I don't know. It's just like from childhood I was very optimistic and uh, had this idealism within me that. I could have an equal, that I could have a soulmate. And uh, where did that intuition or that idealism come from? How did I rationally come to the conclusion? Well, it's got to be, have to do with uh, my, my spiritual awakening. Um, <clears throat> because if I have a soul separate than a body, then the potential for a mate a soul's mate is obviously there and then it's just a matter of intuition because there's no I mean I can rationalize it and say that well people make lifelong bonds um, all the time and well I'm coming up against time so we gotta continue with another blog